Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the tile map. So let's get started. So the first thing we could do is we could go to to the object and just go to tile map and you could pick your the one you want. I have a video that shows you what all these look like, but for now we're just going to go to rectangular and then we get this rectangular uh, thing right here. So what you would have to do at first is you would have to open up your tile palette. So I already have a tile palette kind of set up, but when you do open your tile palette, it will ask you where you want to locate your tile palette. I ended up locating it in the sprites, but let me create a folder. Let me name it tile palette, and then um, move all my tile palette objects here. So it would be, you know, best practice to have a folder for your tile palettes. So what you would do is, again, open up your tile palette. It will open up a window saying where you want to save it at. Like I said, I would create a new folder, call it tile palette. And then all you got to do is, let me dock this up here real quick. So you just get this little view right here. And all you have to do is whatever piece of let's say environment you want all you got to do is bring it up so um let's say well i already got these so let, let me show you real quick so these i could select them and i could actually erase these are how you paint it onto your scene so you could paint it you could uh paint with a filled box you could uh pick the actual with the with the pick brush you could actually pick from the scene which one you want uh, there's also a race and there's a flood fill. So so all you got to do is pretty much just bring it up and you go to wherever you want to save it to. So let's say your tile palette. I already have the grass right here. So you just click save and I'll just replace it. And uh, well, that's not supposed to be like that. But yeah, let's say I wanted this puff sprite to act as clouds. Just go back to the tile palette, save it as puff sprite. And then there it is right here. For some reason, it's real small. Um, but anyways, yeah. And you could always, you know, adjust it here or whatever if you have to. So as you can see, it got bigger. And then um, now with all that set, I'm just going to put it right here for now. With the little paintbrush selected, you could actually pick whatever thing you want to paint. So let's start with the floor. And then you could just start, you know, painting your level however you want. However you see that works with your level or whatever and then you know some clouds and then let's say you want to delete it you could just you know click on it and it'll delete so as you can see sometimes you'd have to click everywhere if not just hold down the mouse button and uh, drag everywhere if that don't work you could also hit control and the mouse button to make this little square box and then click it that usually helps and then also you could Click it like this, and uh, where is it at? Is it paint with the. So as you can see, this one toggles the grid. So if you want to paint with the grid on, well, actually, this is just for the grid, I guess. It's if you want to pick the one you you want to paint, and then it also I forgot to tell you, it also asks you to create a new palette. So I just named a new palette, but you could go to create new palette, and then just name your palette whatever you want. So um, I'm gonna put it tutorial palette palette create and then so we have we could add it to a new folder or we could add it to the same one but keep it more organized we're gonna just name it to tutorial palette this time spell it right and then just save it into that folder now we have a whole brand new one so now I could show you from start you just have to drag it in and then you know select the one you want so I'll save it into the tutorial palette and there you go and as you can see with this selected you could actually click and drag so you don't have to do what i did right here all you have to do is click and drag if you go to the game view you can see it does cause some stretching so you know you just got to be aware of that you might be able to adjust it in the settings right here maybe if you select it to uh yeah you would have to change some of these settings to get a little better quality but anyways yeah you could do that um what else and then there's the colliders so if we go to the let's go to the rendering section or not the rendering the tile map section so here's the tile map so the tile map so you can have an animation frame rate so if you have an animations on your on your tile maps it could have uh, you could adjust the frame rate you could adjust the color of the whole tile palette you could adjust the anchor so if you want to if you want to offset it 
you can actually adjust that uh, orientation so if you want to have a different orientation as you can see there's different orientations x and y is 2d x and z well they're all pretty much 2d but they're um at different angles so if i let's see this one that we can't see it if i switch it you can see how it looks you can see it's still there in the in the scene view it's just in a different view so you can't see it i think it's flipped uh backwards but anyways there's also if we go to tile map again there's tile map renderer so this is if we have multiple tile maps so if we duplicate this one let's drag this down so now we have multiple we could have the sorting layer so depending on the sorting layer you want uh, let me try and look uh, where's that there's a way anyways this is just the way you want to pivot the sorting order or the way you want to set the sorting order and then you could have it by chunks or by individual uh, tile maps you could also detect the chunk calling manually or uh, it says calling bounds manually or automatic so if you want to have the calling bounds adjusted automatically or manually uh, you could do that you could also have a mask interaction so uh, that's just the sprite mask so you could just you know make your sprite mask and uh, bring it down make this wider and as you can see you can see the bottom part of the ground inside the sprite mask um, you could also have it be visible outside so only you know outside the mask there's material so you could change the material of it um, and then you could also change the ordering layer right here and then uh, there's also colliders so the colliders delete this so the colliders if i bring this up the colliders the tile map collider so as you can see the tile map collider gets everything and collides it so just be aware of that and actually to yeah i'll just show you like that so i'm going to add a collider here so and it gets everything so the best thing to do when you're making your tile palette uh have clouds have you know your grounds have uh players npcs actually that way you could have them all separate and you could add colliders to your whole tile palette and then you could also add triggers to your whole tile palette if you wanted to for example this one it has a is trigger so if you don't want it to collide with anything just send a message you can you could also have the max tile change count so you could adjust this and right here it just says that it changes the accumulation before doing a full collider rebuild instead of an incremental rebuild change this if uh, the rebuilds are slow so if it's slow for any reason just change the max tile count and then you could change the physics material so if you want it to be slippery whatever this trigger sends a message used by effector this is if you want to use effectors uh, i've showed what effectors are in previous uh, videos of the colliders i'll i'll post a link up above that way you guys can see it uh, there's used by composite this is also a different collider uh, I also showed a video about that. I'll post that up above. Offset. So if you want to offset the whole collider of all the odd or of all the the tile palette pieces, and then this is just debugging info. Contacts if it has contact with anything. And then I'm gonna add a rigid body just to show you guys that it actually collides. And for this to actually work, I need to add another collider here. Actually, a tile map collider. Now, just because you're using a tile map does not mean you need to use this tile map collider. This is just an easier way to do it if you have a bunch of pieces all together. But you do not have to use it. You could use just like a regular box collider or a sphere, a sphere collider or a circle collider if you're in 2D. Actually, let me pause this because I'm too close and you're not going to be able to see it. Okay, so I'm back. So make sure your collider wasn't looking like mine because I think Unity froze. So make sure that you separate them like this if you're going to have or if it's going to look so if there's so much squares on your, your collider, it's probably going to be uh, performance heavy. So just be in mind of that. So as I was saying, you don't have to use the tile map collider. For instance, I'm going to use the box collider 2D and then you could just adjust it however you want. So I'm just going to adjust it for this ground right here. So now this ground is just going to fall down, it's going to miss these clouds and it's going to collide with the floor. And I'm just going to add the rigid body to add the gravity and I'm going to hit play and hopefully this time it don't freeze. So now as you can see it's going to fall 
it misses the clouds and it collides with that bottom one. So let's say for example, I raise this up and I drop it over here. And yeah, it collides as we expect. So yeah, you don't have to use that tile map collider. Now, I think that's pretty much it for the tile map section. Yeah, so we learned about this tile map over here. You could uh, adjust, or actually over here, you could adjust the animation rates if you have any animations going on. And the animation has to be on this for the work or the animator. And then uh, you could adjust the colors, the anchors, the orientation, the sorting order. You could define if you want to be visible inside a mask or out. Uh, you could change the sorting orders or the order and layers. Uh, and then uh, what else? There's the collider. The collider you could uh, change the tile uh, count. So if it is acting slow, uh, I think you gotta increase it. So yeah, increase it. If it is acting slow, so just increase this. Uh, you can add it physics, add it trigger if you want it to be affected by an effector or by a composite collider. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you learned anything, uh, hit that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe uh, button. Also hit that icon button if you want to get notified right away as soon as I post a video. Uh, the next thing I'm going to be uh, talking about is most likely going to be uh, this, uh, maybe the effects right here. So what an outline is, what position as UV1 is, and what shadow is. And then I'm going to go into more of these stuff, like the re Rect Mask 2D, the mask. Well, actually, I think the mask, we actually showed it here. Oh, well, that's the Sprite Mask. Okay, so yeah, we're going to be talking about the mask, the Rect Mask 2D, probably the Scroll Rect, Selectable, all this stuff. So just stay tuned, and uh, once again, thank you guys for everything.